Now, when you think about Chrome, you might think of the browser application on your laptop or your phone. But what about all the other places you find Chrome? You know, what about Chrome on a Chromebook? Or if you're a developer, you might have heard of web apps or web view, trusted web activities and custom tabs. You know, are they Chrome? And where does Chromium fit? Well, I'm Sam Dutton, a developer relations engineer with the Chrome team. And in this video, I'll give you an overview of how Chrome and Chromium are used on desktop, mobile, wearables, smart devices, and there will even be a spacecraft. But first, what's the deal with Chromium? Well, Chromium is the open source browser that Chrome is based on. Chromium itself has several components. For example, Blink is the rendering engine used by Chromium. And the rendering engine of a web browser is the part of the software that's used to transform HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, along with images and other resources, into the web pages that you can view and interact with. Chrome, Microsoft Edge, Samsung Internet, Opera, Vivaldi, Brave, and other Chromium-based browsers and frameworks use Blink. To parse and execute JavaScript and WebAssembly code, Blink uses V8. V8 is the open source engine developed by the Chromium project to run JavaScript and WebAssembly code in Chrome. Now, for the job of interacting with the underlying graphics hardware on a device, you know, your phone or laptop or whatever, Blink uses the Skia graphics engine. And you can find out more about all this from our video, What is Blink? So, yeah, that's Chromium in a nutshell. And you can actually download and run Chromium as your browser if you want. But Chrome adds some important features. Chrome adds proprietary software for decoding audio and video files known as codecs. Chrome can report errors if users give permission. And Chrome provides a number of user agent features like password management, shared history, bookmarks, and more that use your Google account. And Chrome also goes through rigorous additional testing processes through its release channels, Chrome Canary, Chrome Dev, Chrome Beta, and Chrome Stable. And best of all, Chrome downloads updates automatically. And you can find out more about the different Chrome channels from our video, What Are Chrome Release Channels? Now, Speaking of testing, you might also want to take a look at Chrome for testing. And this is a version of Chrome designed specifically for web app testing and automation use cases. And with Chrome for testing, you get versioned browser binaries that don't auto update, which helps you consistently produce results for a suite of end to end tests across multiple runs. Now, you might also be wondering about Chrome OS. This is the Google-designed operating system used on Chromebooks. And Chrome OS can run Android applications from Google Play and web apps such as Google Docs. Chromebooks can also provide a full Linux environment. Apps on Chrome OS can be launched outside of the Chrome browser. And you can find out more about Chrome OS from Google's Chromebook Hub. Anyway, getting back to rendering engines. Chrome, Microsoft Edge, Opera Vivaldi, Brave, and other Chromium-based browsers and frameworks use Blink as their rendering engine. Safari and some other browsers use WebKit, and all browsers on iOS, including Chrome, also use WebKit. Firefox uses a rendering engine called Gecko. Now, Chromium Blink is available on multiple platforms, including Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Chrome OS, Android, and Android WebView. An important use case here is how to access web platform features in contexts outside of a web browser, in particular, how to display web content within mobile and desktop apps. A web view is a UI component, a view, in an app that can display web content. And that content can be loaded from the network via an HTTP request or from the local file system or shipped with the application package, unlike for custom tabs or trusted web activities, which I'll talk about in a moment. An app can use a web view alongside native components. 
Now, of course, you could instead get an app to open a web page in an external browser, but that's a major context switch for the user, and it risks the user abandoning your app. Android WebView is one of the platforms for Chromium. It uses Blink for rendering and V8 to run JavaScript and WebAssembly code, so it provides developers and users with a familiar experience. WebView is the most commonly used way to embed web content into Android apps, and the vast majority of Android apps use WebView. WebView can be appropriate if you're hosting your own content inside your app. You can define interfaces between your Android app and your WebView to enable JavaScript and web pages to call code and access APIs in the containing Android app, or vice versa for your app to call JavaScript in pages in a WebView. And that gives a web page access to Android APIs, and it gives an Android app access to web page features. Now, bear in mind that WebView is designed as a web UI toolkit. It's not meant to support all web platform features. And that is where custom tabs come in. WebViews use the same rendering engines as web browsers. Android WebView uses Blink. But like I said, WebViews don't support all the features of the web platform, and they don't share state with the user's browser. Custom tabs were built to solve that problem. They're also a good choice if your users need to access content and services across multiple domains. For example, you might have an online news app with content on one domain and subscription services on another. Custom tabs allow the user to access web content, but to remain within an Android app. With custom tabs, the user always sees the URL bar. Now, you can configure custom tabs to some extent, for example, to match color themes of your app or to use custom entrance and exit animations or to hide the URL bar on scroll. Now, by default, custom tabs launch as a full window activity, but you can configure partial custom tabs to specify different launch dimensions and custom tabs can also be minimized. Custom tabs use whichever browser is the default for the user, so they share state with the browser just as if the custom tab was another tab in the browser. The user's browsing sessions, saved passwords, payment methods, and addresses are all shared, though the app that contains the custom tab does not have access to that state. Custom tabs also support web platform features not available in a web view, including web push notifications, background sync, form autofill, media source extensions, and the sharing API. Service workers are supported in custom tabs, which means your app can display web content while offline. Now, a really common use case for custom tabs is for apps that want to take advantage of built-in Android features, but also need to access web content and services. For example, e-commerce sites often implement product pages in native views, but provide checkout using web pages. Okay, so you might also have heard of trusted web activities, but you know, where do they fit with custom tabs? Well, trusted web activities are derived from custom tabs and they share all their advantages. The major difference is that a trusted web activity can be full screen with no browser UI. Trusted web activities are recommended if you want to open your own website in full screen inside your own Android app. And this can be useful for encapsulating a web app into an Android app for distribution through Google Play or for having full screen web journeys inside of a web native hybrid app. In other words, the app and the web pages it opens are expected to be from the same developer. And this is verified using digital asset links. And this is what enables the trusted web activity to be full screen with no address bar and no browser UI at all. You can think of an Android app as a container for activities. And a trusted web activity is a web activity. And it's trusted because digital asset links verify that the app owner is the content owner. And that's crucial to enable the URL bar to be hidden. 
Trusted web activities are a great option for apps focused on content. And they're also great for so-called light apps for regions where low spec phones are common and users regularly delete apps that take up storage to make space for new ones. And of course, trusted web activities are updated whenever you update the web content they use. And the web platform is updated every time the user's browser is updated. So there's no need to update your app in the Play Store. Now, a great way to learn more about Trusted Web Activities is to complete the Code Lab. And this shows you how to take an existing progressive web app and wrap it in an Android app for distribution in Google's Play Store. Speaking of which, uh, Progressive Web App is, well, just a website, but it provides a user experience like a native app. And PWAs are built on web platform technologies. So that means you can maintain a single code base for people who visit your site in a browser and those who use your site as an installed application. Any application you create for Android must be compiled and packaged in a single file called an Android application package. It's an APK. And the APK includes all of the application's code, resources, and assets, along with a manifest file. And the APK is what you distribute to your users, either from an app marketplace like the Google Play Store or from your own website. Now, when you install a web app in Chrome on Android, the browser creates an APK for it, and that is called a web APK. Installation via an APK means your progressive web app is treated just like any other Android app. The PWA is shown in Android's App Launcher and Android App Settings. And you can also configure your PWA manifest to register intent filters. So when a user clicks on a link that you've registered for your PWA using intent filters, the link is opened in the PWA rather than in the browser. There is lots more information about PWAs on our site, web.dev, including a free course to help you get started and learn best practice. Now, one last thing. I haven't talked about how Chromium or its components like Blink and V8 are being used in other contexts beyond the browser. Of course, if you're a web developer, you'll probably be familiar with web servers or runtimes built on V8. And that includes Node, Couchbase, and Dino. Now, Chromium has also been used to build application frameworks, including Electron, which is used for lots of well-known apps, Chromium Embedded Framework, which is used by Spotify Desktop and others, and my old friend, Qt Web Engine, no, Qt Web Engine, which is used in lots of critical technical, scientific, and embedded contexts. Chromium, V8, and WebView are also the basis for most of the major super apps and their ecosystems, such as WeChat, Alipay, and Gojek. And Chromium is also the app platform used for nearly every smart TV. And Chromium is used in smartwatches, automotive installations, gaming consoles, XR devices. I could go on. But as promised, last but not least, the final frontier. Chromium has even made it into space. Chromium is used for parts of the SpaceX Dragon capsule UI. And the Dragon is the first spacecraft with touchscreens and the first to use JavaScript. And they also made extensive use of web components. And there's actually a really interesting discussion with the engineers available on Reddit. So I hope you've enjoyed getting to know Chrome's extended family. To find out more, take a look at our article on developer.chrome.com. And thanks for watching, and be sure to check out the other videos in the Chrome Concepts series.